Hi, my name is Billy Schoenberg and I'm a developer with IC Systems. And today I want to show you how to build a model using Stella Modeler for the iPad. So the model that we're going to build today is going to be a little model of a pizza shop. Uh, we'll model uh, their costs, their sales, uh, with the goal of keeping track of their cumulative profit. So let me show you uh, how to create a new model using Stella Modeler for the iPad. This here is the home screen that you get to when you open the application, and in the upper right hand corner you'll see this plus icon. And what you do is you tap on this plus icon, and it opens up this nice popover which allows us to enter in a model name. So this model, since it's going to be about a pizza shop, we'll call it uh, Pizza Shop. We then have other options to control here, like the start time, uh, so what time this model starts, the stop time, when it ends, the time step, how often it calculates, the time units, so uh, the unit of time that passes, as well as the sim speed. So in this case, our pizza shop is going to go from week 1 to week 12, and it'll step every quarter of a week, and our time units need to be weeks. And we'll just leave the sim speed somewhere in the middle, so the animation goes at approximately uh, the right speed. So when we hit done now, we get launched into the pizza shop model. This is a canvas which will allow us to put down stocks and flows and connect them up and write equations. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to put down a converter. A converter is a variable which is calculated um, at a single point in time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for the circle icon in the bottom left hand corner in the uh, toolbar down there and I'm going to tap on the circle which represents the converter and tap again on the canvas. What it does is it pops up the keyboard which is going to allow me to name this variable. So this variable is going to be my price. Now that I've placed the variable we want to go in and define the equation for the variable. So to define an equation for a variable, you double tap directly on the variable name and it brings you into the equation editor. In the equation editor, you're then able to enter in uh, the equation which will be used for this element. So in this case, uh, you know, let's just assume that our pizzas are priced at uh, $12 per pizza. So we entered in the equation 12 and now what we need to do is use the unit checking feature in Stella Modeler for the iPad to enter in the units. So the units, uh, like we were saying before, is dollar per pizza. So now we've entered in a price uh, for our pizzas, and we should go in and enter in an assumption for what our sales are going to be. So again, we tap the converter icon in the lower left-hand portion of the screen, tap again on uh, the canvas, giving uh, ourselves a new uh, variable, and we'll call this one sales. So again, now when uh, we've created sales, we see that we have this warning symbol in it. Uh, this warning symbol means that we haven't yet entered an equation, or that the equation that we have entered is invalid. So let's go ahead and define our sales. So for the moment, uh, so that we can get to a running model real quick, let's just assume that our sales are constant. Let's assume that uh, you know we sell 100 pizzas per week. So we enter in 100 for the equation, and in the units, pizza per week. So now that we've finished entering in our equation for sales, let's go back and look at our model, and you'll see that the warning symbol has disappeared. And so let's now calculate uh, what our revenue would be in this scenario. So again, we choose another converter from the bottom left by tapping on the circle and tapping again on the canvas. And this time we'll name the variable revenue. And so now here um, we have a warning symbol, but in order to calculate revenue we need to multiply price by sales. In order to multiply two variables together, what you need to do is you need to draw a connector between the variable that's going to be the input and the variable that's going to use the value. So I've tapped the connector tool in the toolbar on the bottom right hand, left hand portion of the screen, and I'm going to uh, press and hold on price, dragging my finger towards revenue and releasing my finger when it's above revenue. And so now what that's done is that's hooked the price variable 
to the revenue variable, which is going to allow me to use price in the equation for revenue. So let's create another connector now from sales to revenue. I tap the connector icon in the lower left hand portion of the screen. I press on sales, dragging, keeping my finger down the entire time to the arrow is over revenue and releasing. So now what we can do is we can double tap on revenue to open up the equation editor and you'll see that we have two required inputs, price and sales. So let's multiply price times sales, which gives us our revenue. Now in this case, we know our revenue is going to be uh, dollars per week, but uh, rather than having to type in dollars per week, because we've entered in the units for the inputs, we can use this nifty suggest button in the center of our screen to suggest for us what the software thinks the units ought to be. So when I tap on the suggest button, it comes up with for me for the appropriate unit uh, for this equation, dollars per week. So now we've set up our price, our sales, and our revenue, and we're at a point where we can run this model. It's always good when building models to keep uh, your addition small and quick so that you can quickly iterate on your model. What you really want to try and do is make sure you're never five minutes away from a running model. So let's go ahead and run this model real quick and make sure that everything checks out. So to do that, we tap the simulate button in the upper right hand portion of the screen, and we tap again on the run button in the lower uh, left hand portion of the screen. This runs the model for us and we can see that our price, our sales, and our revenue are all constant, which makes sense. Our price is a constant, our sales is a constant, we're multiplying the two of them together to get a constant. When we zoom in by pinching outwards, we can see that revenue is flat at $1,200 uh, no, $1, per week, which is 100 times 12. So let's zoom out now and tap again on uh, the edit button in the upper right hand portion of the screen to continue building our model. So we've put together now the revenue portion of this model. So let's now go ahead and put together the cost portion of this same model. So what I need to do is I need to move this model structure from the top of the screen a little bit lower so that I can make room to add in the costs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of this structure and then drag it as a group down to the bottom of the screen. So to do that, I tap and hold on the canvas with a single finger, and then I move my finger across the screen, that, which gives me this gray selection box, and I release, selecting all of the elements underneath the box. Next, I put my finger down on one of the symbols, and I drag all of the elements towards the bottom of the screen. And so that's how you do a multi-select and drag. Next, what we want to do, uh, you know, the reason why we moved all of these elements was to create the cost structure. So let's start out with our fixed costs, like our rent. Let's create a, another converter, and we'll put it down, and we'll label it fixed costs. We want to then double tap on fixed costs to enter an equation. So our fixed costs are going to be $500 per week. That's going to be, you know, what we assume our rent to be each week. So into the units box, again, we need to enter in the unit, dollar per week. So you'll keep uh, noticing that I keep saying, oh, you know, the units are dollars per week, uh, and we enter then dollar per week. It's important uh, when using the unit engine at this point that you keep the plurality of your units consistent. So dollars and dollars at the moment will be recognized separately. So I like to enter my units always in the singular form. It means I never get confused as to whether it should be dollars or dollar. So now let's go back to the model and let's start adding in uh, our variable costs. So in order for us to calculate our variable costs, what we need to do is we need to know uh, what the cost of a pizza is. You know, what does it cost us to make that pizza? So let's put down a converter and enter in an assumption. So I've tapped to create the converter, and uh, let's call this one cost of a pizza. And I've uh, mistakenly uh, spelled pizza here. So what I need to do is I need to edit this name and fix my mistake. To do that, I want to press and hold on the name till the editor pops back up. And then what I can do is I can tap within the editor to get a cursor.
and that's how we can edit a name. Now what we want to do is we want to enter in the equation for the cost of a pizza. So let's double tap on cost of a pizza and let's enter in, let's just assume it costs us three dollars. So what I want to do is I just want to remember here why I entered in three dollars. You know the three dollars accounts for you know a buck fifty in flour and a buck fifty in cheese. So you can use this comments field here to uh, help you remember why you've entered in uh, different parts of the equation. So now that we've uh, set up our cost per pizza, we need to set up our weekly variable costs. So that's going to entail multiplying our weekly sales by the cost of making those pizzas to get our uh, variable costs. So let's put down the variable variable costs. And let's set up that relationship. So we need to connect cost of a pizza to variable costs as well as sales to variable costs. So what I'm doing is I'm moving sales towards variable costs because I want it to be a little bit closer. But you'll notice that when I move variables like this, the connector knob stays in the same position. So what we want to do is we want to move the knob so that we maintain a straight relationship between sales and revenue. We do that by pressing and holding on the connector knob, dragging our finger in a circle around the variable that we want to move the knob, which allows us to change the shape of the curve. So let's now draw a new connector from sales to variable cost. Great, so we've now hooked up sales and cost of a pizza to variable costs, so let's enter in the equation. So I've double tapped, which opens up the equation editor, and what we want to do is we want to take our sales and multiply it by the cost of a pizza, and again, we can use the suggest button to tell us what the units ought to be. Dollar per week. Makes sense. So now we've calculated what our fixed costs are and what our variable costs are, so let's sum that together to get our weekly costs. So let's create a new converter, and we'll call it weekly costs. And we're going to drag a new connector from fixed costs to weekly costs. And another connector from variable costs to weekly costs. And let's double tap on weekly costs and sum these two up. So we take our fixed costs plus our variable costs is our weekly costs. And again, let's just suggest some units, dollars per week. And we're set. Makes sense. So now we've got our weekly costs and we've got our weekly revenue. And so the difference between the two is our profit. And then we want to keep track of what our cumulative profit is. So when you want to keep track of something over time, the appropriate element to use is a stock. A stock is an integral. It uh, continuously adds values together over time. Then the only thing, though, that can change the state of stocks are flows. Flows change uh, the state of the stock at the end of each time step. So in this case, our weekly profit is going to be a flow into the stock of cumulative profit. So let's start by creating the stock for cumulative profit. To do that, I tap and hold uh, on the uh, box icon on the lower left-hand portion of the screen. And I tap again on the canvas, which puts down a stock element. A stock is always represented in the system dynamics uh, methodology as a rectangle. And so we're going to name this stock cumulative. And then we can also put returns in names, which is nice. Profit. So in this case, uh, you know, if we didn't want the name on the top of our stock, let's say we wanted it in the middle of our stock, what we can do is we can grab the name with our finger, just uh, press and hold, and drag it into the center of the stock. So press, drag inside the stock. So it's obscured at the moment by the warning symbol because we haven't yet entered in the equation for the stock. So let's go ahead, create the flow, and enter in the equations. 
So you create a flow by using uh, the second tool from the right on the bottom left hand corner of the screen, the flow. You tap, you press on the screen, keeping your finger down the entire time, moving your finger towards the stock, and when the cloud is over the stock, release. By releasing any flow cloud over a stock, the flow will automatically connect to the stock. So here now it's prompting us to name this flow. Let's call this flow weekly profit. So now we have an undefined flow and an undefined stock. So let's go and start defining some of these equations. Let's double tap on cumulative profit to define its equation. And here it's asking for something slightly different than an equation. It's asking for an initial equation. Since, like we described before, stocks calculate over time, what you need to do is you need to initialize a stock with a value. So when you initialize a stock, you're able to initialize it using any variable in your model or a constant. So in this case, we're going to initialize our cumulative profit with a constant zero. We have none to begin with. And then we need to enter in some units. In this case, our cumulative uh, profit is measured in dollars. So now we're going to go back to the model. We can see the warning symbol's gone away. And we need to draw some connectors between our weekly profit and our weekly costs. So let's take our weekly costs and drag it towards profit and our revenue and drag it into profit, double tapping on the weekly profit and entering in an equation. So you'll see here that the units are automatically prepared for us because the stock is able to tell the flow what its units ought to be. Since stocks um, can only be modified by flows, stocks aren't measured in a per time way. They're measured as absolute amounts, whereas flows must be per time because they change the stock per each unit of time. So let's add our revenue. Oh, no, we don't want to add revenue to weekly costs. We want to actually, from our revenue, take away our weekly costs to come up with what our profit's supposed to be. So let's check and make sure that we've got the units right here. So when we hit check, it says uh, success. Units are consistent with the equation. So let's go back. And now we've got ourselves a fully defined model, which we're able to simulate by tapping the simulate button in the upper right, the run button in the lower left. And we can see here that we've got uh, increasing profits. If we zoom in by pinching outwards, we can see, but it's kind of muddied by uh, the label that we've put on top of the stock, the graph. So something I like to do in this kind of a case is actually use the ghost tool to create a new version of the variable so that I can more clearly see the graph. So I'm going to use the ghost, which is going to create kind of like a shadow copy of the variable. So I tap the ghost tool, I tap cumulative profit, and it turns into this dashed um, entity, letting us know that we've selected cumulative profit as the variable that we're going to ghost. And then I tap again on the canvas to create that shadow copy. So let's then tap away and then move the name out of the center by tapping the element, grabbing the name, and dragging it back to the top. So now when I simulate the model again, you'll see that I can actually see the behavior and zoom in and it's not uh, obscured by the name. We can also look at results by tapping on any entity and it'll bring up this nice overview, overview graph which gives us more detail. We can then get further detail by pressing our finger and sliding it across the graph to see values at specific points in time. So we can see here that we've built a pretty successful pizza shop. Obviously we're missing a little bit of feedback here, not quite uh, the most realistic model. But hopefully now you understand how to use Stella Modeler to build models on the iPad.